Okay, good morning, everyone. Right. Good morning to the online students as well. Thank you for joining. It's good to see you all here. That recording has started. All right, so before we go ahead, let's just do a quick review of what we did last week. Right, last week we talked about the urgency of sharing the gospel. And we looked at some of the examples there. There's no second chance. Time is running out. And one very important point that we learned was not to be ashamed of the gospel. Right? Uh, so wherever we are, wherever we are ministering, we are not to be ashamed of the gospel. We need to understand that the gospel is the power of God. And when we come and share the gospel with people, it's not about our ability. It's not about our talents. It's not about our gifts. But it's the power of God unto salvation. Right? So that should be our confidence. We've been talking about that, right? Sometimes we try to use our own strength. Say, no, I have to share like this. I have to do this. I have to do that. And only then I can minister to people. No. The gospel, the simple gospel, is the power of God to salvation. Right? Everyone with me? Everyone are looking blank. Everyone okay? Yes? Everyone online are okay? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Right. Okay, let's go to chapter 2. We looked at um, the gospel message. What is the message of the gospel? What's the gospel message? Somebody, please. Online, somebody can please share. What is the gospel message? God gave his only son. Okay. What is the main message? The main gospel that we preach, what is it? Okay, very good. His death, his burial. So basically, it's the message of the cross, right? We are not giving a message that is pleasing their, you know, ears. But the message of the cross is the power of salvation, right? And um, we looked at this, right? The gospel is the message of the cross of Christ. Now, have we gone into this point, the message of the cross? No? Oh, okay, we're in chapter two. Okay, let's go to that point, right? The message of the cross. Now, the gospel, when we look at the Old Testament, it was the first time the word gospel was used. It means message, right? Abraham had a message to deliver, right? Now, what is the message that you and I are called to share? It is the cross of Jesus Christ. Right? Now, is the cross a good message? Is it something interesting? Is it nice? Does it look nice? Bloodshed, murder. Right? It doesn't look nice. But in the natural, it looks like a complete failure. In the spiritual, it's victory. Right? Now, all of us are believers. When we think of the cross, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? Any of you can share. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Defeat, OK. Death of Jesus, victory. One said defeat, one said victory, OK. Okay, okay, that's fine. Right. Anybody else, boys? When sorry? Redemption, okay. What else? When you think about the cross, love, beautiful. What else? What else? Chill on. What? Huh? Love. Only love. What's your name? Nickel. What do you think about the cross? Yeah. 
very good you know what is the first thing that comes to my mind when i say cross forgiveness right because there's no other message where there is forgiveness of sins in many places in many belief systems you pay for the sins right okay this is the sins and then so i go i roll on the mountain i have to go do this i have to do that there are a lot of works that we have to do right many of you who are from different faiths there are a lot of works right but in the gospel through the cross we find forgiveness of sins not by any work right you can't go up to jesus and say okay jesus i will become a pastor will you forgive me i will become a good worship leader will you forgive me that is what is that coming by what works but the message of the cross is not about coming by works it's coming by that assurance that jesus paid the price so first thing that comes to my mind when i say cross is forgiveness power Colossians chapter 1 says he defeated the enemy. Isn't that powerful? He defeated the enemy. It's, the enemy has been defeated. It's power, authority. And so there are so many things that we think of when we think about the cross. God has chosen the foolish method of preaching and sharing and communicating the gospel to save people right so we want to see people saved the method is to preach the gospel right? another place in the book of romans he says how will they know if we don't tell them how will they know the gospel imagine the 12 disciples after jesus died the 12 disciples are sitting at home and just playing or looking after themselves, looking after their family, what would have happened? The message wouldn't have gone across. I mean, know that the disciples, the apostles went out into different nations, and then we look at church history, the ministry just grew. Why? Because people went out and shared the gospel, right? Each one of you also. It's not that you're learning about Jesus just to equip yourself. That's good. Equipping yourself is good. But the point of equipping yourself is to what? Preach the gospel. Because God has chosen that method to bring uh, people into the knowledge of his love. We preach the same message to the Jews and to the Greeks. Now, when we're saying Jews to the Jews and Greeks, we need to take it into context, right? Jews are people who are who look at the supernatural. Why were the disciples? Okay, tell me, how many disciples, how many people came to hear Jesus on the mountain? Book of Luke. How many, how many people came? Jesus is preaching. There was five loaves of bread and two fish. How many people were there? Five thousand? Okay. And the second time, how many people were there? About eight thousand, right? And so, all of this, is, all of these people believe in Jesus, right? But after Jesus died, how many people were in the upper room waiting? Acts chapter one. Where are all the hundreds of people, thousands of people gone? Where are they gone? They were not there, right? Why? Because. We read that in the book of John, they only were after Jesus because they wanted to see miracles. Oh, this guy is doing wonderful miracles. Front of our eyes, the blind is healed, the deaf is hearing, the lepers are healed. He took five loaves of bread, he broke it, he fed thousands of people. He's a great supernatural person. But after he died, oh, maybe he was just one teacher. God used him in a good way. Right? That's the Jewish supernatural way. They wanted only healings and miracles. And then there were the Greeks. Remember, Paul goes to many places. Intellectually, he had to talk to them. He had to minister to them. 
the Greeks believed in many things. So he had to say, hey, this is what the gospel is. Now, did Apostle Paul try to defend by explaining many things? No. He says there, uh, you know, later on in his epistles, he says, I preached the gospel and people were saved. Right? I preached the gospel and people were saved. Let's look at this example, right? A. A. Allen uh, was, a, there was a wonderful, uh, did you all do this in the supernatural time? A. A. Allen, right? God's generals, right? A. A. Allen was a wonderful, wonderful man of God. Right? He, God used him so powerfully. He would come and God would just minister through him, bring healing to thousands of people. Right now, what is one thing that he says is, I don't know much, but one thing I know that God is powerful. He experienced the power of God in his life, and he was able to, you know, explore that and release that from his life. Right. The message of the cross is both the power of God, everyone's the power of God. How many of us want the power of God? Others I can do with my own power. I need the power of God, right? Because if not the power of God, we will fail. Somebody read Zechariah 4 6. Zechariah. Four, six. Yes, I see here. Krishna Shilkumar says love and praise about the cross. Nina says perfect sacrifice to reconcile man to God. Yes, thank you for your thoughts. Let's read Zechariah chapter four and verse six. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Right? Now, let me give you a context of this verse. Right? There was a king named Zerubbabel. Right? And Zechariah is the prophet during that time. So God is telling Zerubbabel, you build the temple, rebuild the temple, because the temple was destroyed. You rebuild the temple. But Zerubbabel, as a king, is thinking, God, if I rebuild this temple, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, they will come and destroy it. What is the use of rebuilding this temple? By the time I start the construction, they'll come and destroy it. They are not going to agree with what we are going to do. right? But God speaks to the prophet Zechariah and says, Zechariah, you go to King Zerubbabel and tell him this. What is that? Zerubbabel, you may be the king, you may be powerful, but your power is only in the natural sense. Because it's not by might, nor by power, but by the Holy Spirit of God who will empower you to build the temple. Right? Isn't that powerful? Sometimes we try doing things on our own, right? We may fail. Because we're relying on our own strength. When we have the power of God in us, people will recognize it. Yes? People will recognize. People will say, hey, something about this person. This guy has the anointing of God. There's a presence inside him. Even demons will know that. Amen? Are you excited for that? Right? You need the power of God. And that's what this is. Two is the wisdom of God. Right? Now, why is wisdom? What is wisdom? Somebody tell me what is wisdom? What is wisdom? Hmm. What is wisdom? Sorry? Putting into practice the knowledge acquired, okay. Wisdom. 
So you all sing songs without knowing the meaning. It's recording. I'll talk to you after that. What is wisdom? Knowledge. Okay. See, we read, we read many things. Okay, we understand. But wisdom is the appropriate, which means the right use of the knowledge that we have. The right use. That's what wisdom is. Did Jesus have wisdom? Did he have knowledge? Yeah. Remember, they came up to him, they wanted to trap Jesus. Jesus, they saying, pay taxes. What did Jesus say? Ah, can you see the wisdom there? Give me the coin. Whose face do you see? So Caesar's. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. End of story. You see the wisdom, right? Now, what is speaking without wisdom? They're saying give taxes. Go give. But Jesus used that example so powerfully. He said, yes, we have to give because we are under Roman rule. There's a portion that you have to give God first. Right? Now, in ministry, many, many, many times, we see that people fail not because of knowledge, not because they don't know the Bible. They know the Bible, but they fail to use it in the right way. If you use it in the right way. And that is why wisdom is very important. We can have head knowledge of Genesis to Revelation, can know everything, which is good. But if we don't make a right use of it, we will fail. You're getting what I'm saying? Right? We can't go to a church and if 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 if, if somebody is saying that, you know, uh uh, or invites you to a church, right? And you see this this happened you know, many times. You know, there's this one time I was we were ministering in North India, and, and this I had to preach, and then there was another guest like guest speaker. And during the worship time, suddenly there was some sound, and this man came in with sunglasses and blazers and all that and he started walking inside i don't know why he was wearing sunglasses because it was evening he came and he stood next to me and everyone are taking uh, photos and all the worship is going on who, who is this guy and then he was talking to the people who are arranging the meeting and he said i'm not preaching here i said why because my banner is not there the banner with my face is not there now this man is a gifted man, gifted preacher. God has used him to bring healings, miracles, everything, right? Now is this speaking in knowledge? This is all knowledge or wisdom. He went off. I told the other, let him go. Right? It's not needed. Wisdom is appropriate use of the knowledge that we have. What does the Bible say? Walk in humility. Walk in humbleness. Does he? Do we know it? Yes. And when we apply it, it becomes wisdom. If we only know it, it's over here. Head knowledge. You get what I'm saying? Right? When you worship God during the worship time, if you're thinking, oh, when is the bridge going to come? When is the second verse? When will this worship get over? They're not singing correctly, they are not playing. Then it is head knowledge, head worship that is. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's a waste of time. Sorry to say this, but it is a waste of time. But when you worship God in spirit and in truth, God opens his heart. God reveals. Right? The wisdom of God flows in us. Right? So when we are ministering to people, very important, use wisdom, right? It could be small things, it could be big things, right? Many churches we go, they'll say, remove your footwear. Now, if I go in and I say, hey, that is for Moses, not for me. 
I may know the truth. I don't have to remove, but I don't have to explain it to them. It's their culture. It's, it's walk in wisdom. Right? Women should not cover their hair. Wherever we go, minister in North India, women cover their hair. You don't have to go and tell them, hey, that is only for Corinthian church, not for us. You don't have to do all that. Right? You can teach them, but you don't have to you know, put it across in the wrong way. That would be lack of wisdom. Now, the gospel, the message of the cross is the power of God, reveals the power of God too, and it's the wisdom of God. God revealed his wisdom through the cross. Can you imagine this? God is the source of all wisdom. And for him, the cross was the correct way to bring salvation. That's God's wisdom. So when we are preaching, we are not preaching our own gospel. We are preaching the wisdom of God. Can God be wrong? So people will say, hey, what? Jesus died 2,000 years ago. You're going on with that same story. Yeah, it's the wisdom of God. Right? So it's not our own ability. It's God's ability to bring change. Are you with me? OK. Now, the Greek word for the word salvation means sozo. Right? The Greek word is sozo. Now, sozo is, I'm sure you may have heard of it. This word is a comprehensive word. Right? The word comprehensive is it means it's not just one meaning. It's got many facets to that word. Right? Uh, sozo. Let's look at what it is, right? The word sozo in the New Testament appears more than hundred times, and it's commonly used for the word salvation. Right? What is salvation? We say, okay, Lord, I accepted you as my personal savior. And after accepting him as my personal savior, I receive salvation. I receive sozo. But it's not only salvation. The Greek word sozo is not only one thing. Let's look at what they are, right? The word sozo refers to forgiveness of sins, healing from sicknesses, Deliverance from every work of the enemy, rescue or preservation from danger, total wholeness, right? And being rescued, right? So you see that word, one word, right? It's just one word, but it has so many meanings. So everyone say, I have received sozo. Online students. You have received sozo. So it's not, OK, salvation, OK, I'm going to heaven now, thank you. That's not the story, right? It says here, one, forgiveness of sins. It's such a wonderful feeling, no? Forgiveness of sins. Two, healing from sickness. You know, when I was in Bible college, First semester, right? Uh, I started studying very well. I said I want to do well, and I wrote the faith. I think it was faith exam. Yeah, it was faith. I wrote the exam. I got the answer paper. During those days, we would write, and then you get the answer paper. I got hundred on hundred in faith. It's very happy. Top the class. I said, this is how you study. I told my classmates, you see. It's not about all you guys don't study or do all these other things. This is how you must study. 100. Not two and one wrong. If it was 101 also, the teacher was willing to give. So well I wrote. After the first semester, me and a couple of our classmates, we went. We thought we'll go visit some places and do some ministry. So we went. So everywhere they said, Paul, you preach. You're a topper, no. You <laughs> no, not because of that, but they said you preach. Right? So I went and I said, okay, we'll prepare one 15, 20 minute sermon. And then so I went with full excitement and uh, we went to preach. All these different towns uh, we were in. We went to Andhra, we went to Mumbai, we went to 
different places. And in one of the places, I think it was the first, uh, one of the first few places that we went, after sharing the gospel, everything, preached a nice message, fully anointed of God, one blind man comes and stands in front of me. Totally blind, there's no eyeball, right? Just, just a line. He says, Pastor, you pray for me. I know that God will give me eyes to see. He was born blind. That moment, when I saw this, I said, how is this going to happen? Where? How will the eyeballs come? There's no eyeball, it's just a... And God reminded me of my faith answer paper. 100 on 100. And I said to myself, Holy Spirit, I put a zero out of 100 on myself right now. That is just on paper. But in my spirit, I felt like a failure. I said, Lord, zero. Give me zero. I don't want this. I felt so miserable and I went to sleep that night. I boasted so much about 100 on 100. Man came, he has faith, I don't have faith. He's saying, you pray, eyes will come. I'm saying, how will it come? I put, I put zero. I just I felt so miserable that night. I woke up, but that night, I, I remember saying, God, never will I go by just knowledge. If you want to work in me, you have to reveal yourself to me. Reveal your power that it may be seen in people's lives. Three days over, four days over. Last day, next, we were going to another city. I said, God, today's the last day. Every day he came for prayer. Pastor, you pray. The moment he sees me, I will turn this way and try to escape. Last day, I said, God, do something. I don't want to be in ministry and just have a head knowledge. What did Paul say? He preached the gospel followed with demonstrations. There were signs, miracles, and wonders. If that is true, show it. Really looked after God. I asked God to forgive me for all my sins, boasting about the marks. Luckily, my friends are good friends. They never <laughs> reminded me of that. I said, this is the time, Lord. You have to do something. And I remember, story cut short, on the last day we were praying. I said, God, you do something now. I'm not going to do ministry ever. I don't want this. I don't want. I, I'm not going to go back to Bible college. Just go, go back and work in the ID company. So we prayed. And to my surprise, the moment we finished praying, he had white eyeballs. And I could just see his eyes for me. And he could see. I was jumping with excitement. He was normal. He went and sat there. So aren't you happy? He said, yeah, I know. God has done no on the Bible. He'll do for me. I knew it. So God has used you. Thank you for praying. And I thought to myself, if ministry is about head knowledge, it's not going to get us anywhere. It's the power of God under salvation. What does it say here? If I have received salvation, there's healing from sicknesses, healing from deliverance of every work of the enemy. Right? There's wholeness. Sozo also means to be saved from the devil's power and be restored to the wholeness of God. The devil tries to work in our lives. He tries to uh, you know, put us in bondage. What is the word bondage in Hindi? Who? Banduk. Banduk, I know. <laughs> Banduai. Okay. Ah, yeah, that's the word I'm looking at. Yeah. And he puts us in that bondage. You will never do what you want to do. Right? He brings distractions, he brings troubles. But salvation says he has delivered us from the bondage of the devil. I have many stories where demons have come and I really got scared, but God has ministered, God has just showed his power. Why? Because he has delivered us from the works of the enemy. Right? 
everywhere Jesus went, demons came and fell at his feet. Demons didn't say, let me think, can you come back next time? No, no. Because of the power of God, they can't stand it. Right? Sozo means healing from every sickness and disease. Sozo means rescue and preservation from danger. There are so many examples I've written here. Um, there's a person named Rebecca Brown. She wrote this book called, he said, he came to set the captors free. The story is about a, a man who was into witchcraft. His family was into witchcraft. And uh, growing up, this boy became very learned in, you know, in this whole witchcraft. And uh, he was very powerful. He was able to do a lot of things. Very learned man. And uh, as he grew up, he wanted to, he began to go to church to tell people that Jesus is not the way. You know, I, I'll, I'll show you the real way. And he did, you know, great miracles and all of that, uh, high up in the ranks in witchcraft. And so he would go sit in the church. Nothing would affect him. Right? But one day, he was sitting in the church, and something struck him. Right? It was something like, God is the most powerful. So he said, no, no, God is not powerful. Satan is the most powerful. He went home very angry that day. I'm not going to come back to church. That night, he had a dream. In the dream, he's sitting in a train which is burning, and that train is going to go and fall into a burning ditch. It's going super fast speed in the dream. And all of a sudden, he sees a man. And the man is just putting his hand out, and the train stops, and the fire stops. Now, he is surprised in the dream. Who's this who's more powerful than you know, Satan? And he looked at around and all the people are running away and he opened his eyes his dream was over and so he said who is this person i thought i'm serving the strongest the person you know the uh, devil he's the strongest who's this person that even the demons are fleeing away and then he went to church and the next sunday was a message on the power of god god's redeeming work and he accepted christ as his personal savior the name of the book is, He Came to Set the Captives Free. The enemy holds us in bondage. But God came to set us free from that. That is what salvation is. Is any of us in any kind of bondage? If it is, remember He came to set the captives free. If you have salvation, you can come out of that bondage. It's your authority. You have to use it. Picture this. I give you the keys to the Bible college. Okay. New and Old Testament keys refers to authority. Right? Imagine I give you the key to the Bible college. Okay. Uh, Vimal, I give Vimal the key. Okay. We come early morning. So Vimal is standing there, standing outside. Right? The key, the gate is locked, but he's standing outside. He has the key, it's in his pocket. And then all the students come and they're all are standing near the gate. Say, hey, man, we have to go into the Bible college. We have to get in. Vimal says, yes, we have to get in. So who has the key? Vimal has the key. One, you'll either beat up Vimal. <laughs> Say, why, why are you making us wait here outside when you have the key? But you have the key. You have to open it. The key won't go on its own and open. You have to use that authority. You get what I'm saying? Right? You understand what I'm saying, right? You have to use the authority which God has given you. Right? Nobody else can come and take it from you. So I'm saying, I have the key. Should I open the lock? Say, hey, open the lock. We need to go in. You have the key. You have the authority. Come on, do it. Now, if you don't do it, all of them will be sitting outside and chatting, wasting time. Right? That's what authority is. You, God is saying on the cross, he's given you authority. Now it's up to you to use it. How are you going to use it? God, I probably can't pray. 5 a.m. is very difficult to pray, Lord. Sometimes a prayer is going on and you don't know when you're in the prayer. 
same as every now the authority is up to you you get what i'm saying right you can rebuke the work of the devil or you can continue in your sleep right that authority is up to you so what is saying i'm giving you the authority right so so is for everyone you say everyone everyone not only for the english speaking hindi speaking kannada speaking telugu speaking no not only for the worship leaders pastors prophets no for everyone so so is received by grace through faith that's so wonderful right this salvation is received by grace through faith so if you if vimal or vijay says hey i have received salvation they can't say i've received because i spent two hours of every day in prayer two hours reading the bible they can't say that right then i'll say you know i have to do that no to receive salvation no we all receive it by grace by the grace of god and having faith in jesus christ this is such a assurance for us right you don't have to come in through any work so when we are presenting the gospel to people remember it's the grace of god it's the power of god that will work in their lives you and i are just a tool that god uses right he uses us to bring people to the gospel right presenting the gospel message so while presenting the gospel message there are key elements that we must remember right we must make improvisations when we speak meaning now for example if you're speaking to a couple right you should know how to minister to them right you can't talk about instagram facebook they'll get bored so you if it's an older couple you talk to them how they will understand if you're talking to a youth you talk to them how they will understand right so we must be willing to make those changes but the message remains the same you understand what i'm saying right everyone with me yes the message remains the same what forgiveness love what jesus did on the cross that's the message but how we present it can vary from people to places right i remember this one time we were in college in one of the colleges and we were doing something called we had something called as campus elevate where we go to colleges and would give us one period one hour and we can minister to the students like we we have worship and then share a short message so once we played this video of uh, you know this runner derek redman is in the finals of olympics maybe i'll share that video later on um and he falls and he has a hamstring and he can't finish the race but his father comes out from the crowd helps him and he finishes last right but the whole crowd remember this man and not the winner nobody remembers who's who won gold on the 1991 olympics 100 meters everyone remember derek redman who came last because he fell and you know so i played that we, we played that video and we just shared you know this is what god is he's like a father when we fall down he comes he helps us simple message and we saw that the whole youth there were people crying as we are sharing the message it was just two minutes people are crying these boys and girls are crying something that's them right so what am i trying to say we need to understand the audience who we are ministering to come up with ideas ask god for wisdom god how do i reach out to this person how do i share with this person this youth or this older person this younger person a child how do i share with them ask god for wisdom right presenting can change and while we are presenting remember to give the full gospel of jesus right his death his burial his resurrection and what he did for us on the cross right now key areas that we should learn one is the existence of god when we are sharing you know people will ask how do you know there's god to be able to share with them in your own language you can share 
right? You don't wait till, okay, let me learn all of, uh, of, of apologetics and then come back. No. As much as you can, be willing to share, right? The problem of sin and its consequences. So share with people, you know, hey, sin has its consequences. We are all born in sin, right? So you tell them, you know, we are born in sin, and everyone will relate to it. Nobody will say, I'm not a sinner, whether they are Hindu, Muslim, whatever it is. Everyone knows that they're born in sin. There's sin nature inside. So you can start off from that point. Our need for a savior. And what did Jesus do on the cross? Why is Jesus unique? Why not anybody else? Why is why only Jesus? Right? So you should be able to bring out all these points. What would you say? Why Jesus? So somebody will come and ask you, why only Jesus? Nina, what would you say? Why only Jesus? Why not anybody else? Well, so many people have died for others. Huh. Anybody? OK, it's, sure, sure, it's fine. What do you think? Why, why Jesus? Why not any other name? Okay. Because he's God. How do you know he's God? The blood which cleanses. No, you're talking to somebody who doesn't know anything about Jesus. Blood and all, I don't know. Blood is all. Sorry? OK, that's a good point. So what else? What else do you think you can talk about? When somebody says, why Jesus? Why not? Uh, you know? Hmm? No, I don't know this word redeemed and all. I am. You knew the word redeemed when you were in, on in your other faith. No, right? Ah. Okay. Oh, only in Jerusalem. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What? What did he say? Okay, we have time. Yeah. Okay. What else? See, it's good. All good answers, right? But a good way to re deal with this is look at the humanity of Jesus first, right? Was there a man named Jesus? History says yes. Was there a man named Jesus who had uh, who was a carpenter? History says yes. Forget about God. All the history. Yes. Was there cru Roman crucifixion? Yes. Is there historical proof that Jesus died on the cross? Yes. So history says there's a man named Jesus. Now you're not pointing and saying, OK, show me history, whether you, this person lives. There. No. But what you're doing is you're opening his mind. Oh, yeah, there's really a person named Jesus. So there's a person named Jesus. That's point one. And secondly, you can start off by saying, now, what was he? There were many people who came, right? But he was born of a virgin. Nobody in this world has been born of a virgin, right? So you got your point, right? So you're building it up. You're not saying, oh, the redemption of God, Jesus' blood is going to fall on you right now. All that, no. Right? You're just coming on. You understand what I'm saying? right? You're trying to relate to the other person. Right? There was a person named Jesus. So in his mind, there's a person named Jesus. There's nobody else who rose again from the dead. There's no proof anywhere. Even if they rose from the dead, they died again. Right? But there's no there's no one else who did this. So you talk about the uniqueness of Jesus. It will open their heart. Now remember, as you're talking, you're also, you also know that you're talking and the Holy Spirit is ministering to them. Right? It's not only you. The Holy Spirit is going to minister to them. And the Holy Spirit will make them understand. Right? As you're doing your part, the Holy Spirit is doing his part. Right? So present Jesus. Why is he unique? 
God's promise and his invitation. Present God's promise. So this is what God promised. He's promised to heal you. He's promised to forgive your sins. Then repent and believe. You ask them to repent. You ask them to respond. Now, when you say repent, it doesn't mean that they won't understand. They will understand. Right? Whether they are people from different faiths, they will understand what the word repent means. Because there are different kinds of repentance in different faiths. Right? If you look at Hinduism, we'll talk about that later on as well. There are different kinds of repentance. Islam, different you know, repentance. Judaism, Mormonism, different ways where we have to repent. So when you're ministering, when you tell somebody repent, they understand. Right? And response. Ask them to respond to the gospel. And finally, minister the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to touch them and to change them. Ask the gifts of the Holy Spirit to manifest. Words of knowledge, words of prophecy. Now, how will this come? Words of knowledge, prophetic word. How will it come? Through the Holy Spirit. But how will he tell you? He's not going to say, come, I'll tell you. Through his word, OK. Yeah, prophecy, word of knowledge. How is it going to come to you? Through his Holy Spirit, correct. But how do you know the Holy Spirit is talking? Ah. How? Having communion. Yeah, that's that's right. That's good. Right. Yeah. Unless you talk to the Holy Spirit, then he'll talk back. He's not going to come and say whatever he feels like saying to you. He needs you to talk to him, so he will talk back to you. OK, they also understood. He needs you to talk to the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit will talk to you. You know, many times. In church, you know, we give out these words of knowledge. So many times we pray for people. They'll be waiting any word. <laughs> right? And they ask, how is it that you all all in the pastoral team, how is it that you all are, you know, you know all this? It's not by paying money. It's not by, you know, just wearing good clothes or driving a car. All those things don't matter. It's about your time, your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Right? It says here, when you're ministering to people, minister out of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Something that's of the Holy Spirit will touch their lives and change them. I'll close with this example, and then we'll pick up from this uh, from next class. Many, many years ago, uh, we went for a hospital visit to pray for somebody. That person was in his last stages, right? Last stage, and he was almost, he was just a vegetable on the bed, couldn't move about, nothing. And we went there, and you know, uh, as we were going there, I felt God saying, You pray for him, he'll be healed. Right? So I said, uh, I said, okay, you know, if God is saying that my spirit, praying and praying and praying, and the nurses are coming and doctors are coming, nothing's happening to him. I said, okay, let's go. I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, wait, you, know, you, you pray, you stick around here. So I went to him, I was talking to him. He could talk, but he couldn't move, he couldn't do anything. So I told him, see, this is what, you know, just shared what God can do, the impossible things God can do. And their family was there just crying. And they knew these are the last few days. But all of a sudden, I just felt God saying, pray now. So I pray. Pray in Jesus' name. And God began to speak to me and say, tell him to ask for forgiveness for these things. So I said, brother. You ask for forgiveness for these things. He said, how do you know? Said, Forget about that. Ask for forgiveness. Ask Jesus to forgive you 
his blood will forgive you don't keep it in your heart your family is here if they hear it it's okay if they don't hear it it's all right right uh, i just requested them to go and and i said you pray ask for forgiveness god will answer forgive your prayer then he started praying then he started then i said okay you ask for forgive he started asking for forgiveness for everything things that i didn't know everything he started pouring out his heart to god as he's pouring out to god when my hand was on him and we were just praying he's praying and praying he started sitting and he didn't realize it so, and then suddenly my hand from here has come here god jesus all of a sudden my hand has come here and we finished praying and then he's standing and he said brother you're standing I said yeah god has forgiven you your sins are forgiven and then he started running about and then the doctors came and said what's happening here i said he's running about let him walk he's been many years he hasn't walked and the doctor said how is this possible it's not possible family came they all but it wasn't some show i'm not talking about you know i'm not like it's not about me it's not about you know oh we show the doctors who's the real god nothing but it was about the power of god i mean minister and the gifts of the spirit this running the doctor said it was an, uh, we we're going to do a scan we're going to do a test I said do it today i told the family sign do it today they did the test today evening i had to leave evening the reports came there is no sign of any kind of cancer he walked out of the hospital free from every disease how because we're ministering through the gifts of the spirit it is not me it is the holy spirit that pours out the gift and he can bring deliverance right so we we'll close now thank you online students let's just uh, pray quickly and we'll close let's pray father we thank you for this beautiful time lord we thank you for your learning thank you for your wisdom i pray god that you will fill us all with your knowledge and wisdom that we may do what you have called us to do not by our own strength but by the power of your holy spirit working in our lives god we open our hearts we open our hands we open our lives to you and may your working rule and reign in our hearts lord we thank you we give you all the praise lord we give you all the glory for you alone deserve it in jesus name we pray amen man god bless you all have a good week ahead god bless you all uh, online students have a good day